Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux, I am Peter, that's Connor and we talk about movies here on this show. Classic movies, sometimes B-movies, sometimes old movies, sometimes recent-ish movies. Point is, not new films. That's the succinct way of saying that. That's what I'm getting this is, at. This is getting longer every time, I swear. I know. I need to nail down like a perfect intro for the show. I, don't, I haven't quite done it yet because once I find it, I'll say it the exact same way every time. Mm. And it'll be smooth. Look, look, look at the start of any almost cancelled video. Uh, my, it's the exact phrasing every time. I, I hit it, then we get into it, and we go. It's fine. Whereas this now, is si- just, it's just it's awkward because now we're discussing how it, stilted it is. Uh, yeah, we're sitting here talking about the intro now, rather than talking about what we're talking the about. The movie, yeah, which which is the next Godzilla movie. It is. It's uh, Godzilla raids again. We the first episode of this we ever did was the original Godzilla Gojira. Uh, to use the Japanese well, not the Japanese. Well, it is the Japanese spelling, but obviously they write it in Japanese. But if you take it directly, it's Gojira. Uh, but Godzilla and Godzilla raids again came out one year later. They knocked this out in a year. And I actually, it's I've noticed it on IMDb. It's actually telling me specifically that this came out in April. Because I was thinking, well, maybe if the first Godzilla came out like early on in the year, and then this came out late. Yeah, 55, it would have been closer to like eighteen months. Yeah, they've been closer, maybe even closer to two years, really. I mean, it, let's say the original Godzilla came out in January, and then this came out um, in December the following yeah. year. That's practically two years anyway, right? But when about did the the original come out in the year? I have no idea, but this came out in April. So even if the first one came out in January. It's still it's, just it's not great, year. is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Godzilla Raids again, first sequel, cranked it out in a year. Uh, Motoyo- Motoyoshi Oda is the director of this one. That sticks out to me because the little I do know or do remember about the rest of the, the next like five or so movies is that most of them are actually directed by the director of the original film, uh, Ashiro Honda. He actually came back and directed a lot of them. Oh, really? Yeah, so... I double checked him because I was going to say he did this one, and I double checked and I'm like, oh, it's not him. And actually, it makes sense that it wasn't him, given some of the thoughts we're probably going to say in a minute. But that's uh, yeah. So it came out a year later, and there is another another monster in this one, uh, Angulus, uh, which is uh, it is basically just a dinosaur. Uh, Pretty much to the point where when they see it, they actually look through a dinosaur book and go, yep, that one. <laughs> Do you know what really threw me off about that scene? They were talking about, like, oh, Godzilla's just a dinosaur as well. Like, is the way they were talking about it. Yeah, some of the stuff in this one doesn't quite add up with what I... A, know from the first one, and then B, just kind of how things Line come up, up later. later on, yeah. yeah. No, that's not to say that the rest of them all fit perfectly with the first one. They kind of don't... Not that I remember any specific plot-wise, but even just the tone. Like, the first one's its own yeah. thing. It's its own standard classic movie and then the rest because they want to turn it into a series and they want to have Godzilla fighting things it, it changes things but this is certainly from memory I don't remember any of the other explanations just being oh it's a dinosaur that's came back they're, they're all you know Mothra's got his own origin mm. uh, Ghidorah's like from an alien planet like there's, there's really absurd reasons for a lot of the other ones and they came up I have no idea what Rodan's uh, backstory is I've not seen this because Rodan had his own movie as well if I remember correctly so yeah well, we need to watch when we get through all the Godzillas we can go back and watch some of the oh aye I, I'd add more work onto this some of the original like things that tied into Godzilla later on uh, but uh, do, do they come after we do all the Godzillas or do we do them in their placement as we go along We'd be getting to some of them really soon, actually, if we were doing them in the placement. Aye, it's a decision we need to make quite quickly. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. If some of them are probably before King Kong vs Godzilla, but it won't actually matter if we do them after that because none of them are in that. But we get to Mothra, like the next movie after that, so we'd have to do the first Mothra movie before then, yeah. if we were going to. Yeah. I'm not promising anything, people. <laughs> I'm not promising. <laughs> Scheduled. Uh, Busy. Schedule's busy, yes. Uh, so, Godzilla Raids again. Uh, we will just do spoilers. I don't think there's any point in doing spoiler-free of this one. Especially since I, I think there's very little in this you could really spoil <laughs> in terms of uh, plot. I would agree, yeah. So, uh, so, even if you've not seen it and you're like, oh, should I listen? I don't think your enjoyment of the movie will be affected by us telling you plot details. Obviously, we're warning you anyway, just in case you you do feel like that'll ruin your enjoyment. But it is an old movie and so on uh, so this is not as good as the the, the first movie no shit <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's not even on the same scale. It's not in the same ballpark. It's not in the same book. It's not. Pick your metaphor. It's it's not even in the same medium. <laughs> uh, no, I. I've seen this before. I've seen this like several years ago. Sorry, there's something in my arm. I'm very unprofessional of me, uh, scratching away there. Uh, but I've seen this not long after I've seen the first movie the first time, mm. but 10 years ago, something like that. I can't remember. And I remembered it not being that great. And I remembered, oh, once we get to... I, I've never seen the third one, which we're doing obviously next next month, but once we got to the fourth one, I remember, all right, they start getting fun then. And we have that, we have mm. uh, Ghidorah, we have Astro Monster. It gets a bit more ridiculous. A bit more silly, a bit more fun. Whereas this this one falls into a really weird place where it doesn't really know what it wants to be, and the tone's very inconsistent. The because I think one of the biggest problems of this one we're going to call it some goofy moments in terms of uh, maybe the costume or the the miniatures. But honestly, the biggest problem I have with this movie, other than the weird structure, is that there's no sense of foreboding dread. There's no sense like the first film. Regardless of what was happening in that first film, everything revolved around the fact that there's something going on. There's a disaster, there's this yeah. monster, and everything was counting down. It was, everyone was trying to figure out how to react to it, how to respond to it, how to fix it, how to protect people. Everything was always this sense of doomsday's coming, and doomsday mm. in this case is a giant monster named Godzilla. Whereas this one, there is legitimate moments in the film, and this is after Osaka gets completely decimated by Godzilla and Angel- Angelus, uh, where we have like a dinner party. Uh, sort of a dinner party slash engagement party thing where we're with these characters for a good five ten minutes and they're just having drinks and talking and yeah it's it's definitely longer than ten minutes I think it's, it's, uh, well, it does I mean, for quite a while like, yeah yeah it doesn't that. really matter the, the point is is that the entire th- pacing of the movie halts dead so we can have this even before that when they're in like because the main characters they're all pilots well two of the guys are pilots he's one of the girls who's in the sort of control room who talks to the pilots she's engaged to one of them and her dad owns the factory and they all work with the factory and so on and they're in the rubble of the factory after the big osaka fight and and they're making jokes and they're cracking jokes and they're all laughing heartily as if nothing's been on and i'm like just look at the devastation around you thousands if not tens of thousands of people probably died last night you're standing in the rubble what are you felicity smoke stop this <laughs> it's not funny and this is the thing right See, in the later movies i'd accept this a bit more because it is a bit more goofy than that but here it's not be- and i think the big problem with this one is that unlike the because la- later movies make godzilla the hero f- not all of them eventually he becomes the villain again when they try to like turn him mm. back to his roots and so on but in a lot of the versus movies when it's him and another monster he is often the villain not always but often and what this movie and i, I don't want to go into wrestling terms because i know you won't get them connor but this is like in a wrestling term th- this movie is like two heels fighting it's two bad guys and two bad guys fighting doesn't really work usually because you don't have anyone to root for. Two good guys can fight, and that can work because you're mm. conflicted about who you want to win, and it's like honor and so on. And obviously, good guy versus bad guy, the normal thing. Good monster versus bad monster. Mm. Here, Godzilla's still a villain. He's still evil. Well, he's not evil. Evil's not the right word, but he's still everyone's scared of him. Everyone fears yeah. him. They want to destroy he's him. He's a threat. He's a threat. Uh, Angulus also a threat. And really, all Angulus. And it's not even the final fight, and that's probably why it's not called Godzilla versus Angulus, is that he kills Angulus like, in the big fight in the middle of the movie, which is definitely the best part of the movie, by the way, is the big fight in Osaka. Yeah, and this is actually where a lot of the problems with the movie come from for me. Like Up to that point, I think it's mostly okay. Yeah, there's some goofy moments. Uh, I don't think the pacing's as good as the first one, but once it gets to the fight, uh, as much as there are some goofy miniatures, that at one point there's like they're firing these cannons at Godzilla, and every time it cuts to the cannons, the, the 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 soldiers that are on next to the cannons are actually toys, and you can tell they're toys, and they're just little figures just sitting there in the frame, and it's just kind of goofy and silly. But but it's kind of fun. It is fun because the actual when it, as soon as they actually start fighting each other, as much as uh, it looks a little stupid and sped up at times, it's actually kind of fun. They're biting each other. Uh, is, and the, the miniatures that do look good though are the buildings that fall down every time they're mm. throwing each other into a building it looks like it's crumbling the and only exception is the one that cracks in advance yeah because that was like a weird effect it didn't really make yeah. sense the actual when they actually threw them into that building the building crumbling looked great but there was yeah. these weird visual effects beforehand where it looked like it was cracking it looked good yeah these cracks just kind of popped in it was weird so but, actual fight was good 
It was. And this is where my problems start to come in because it's good and it was fun and it clearly went, okay, this is the tone of this movie. This yes. is this is what we're here for. It is it's, it they may not be called a versus movie, but we're here for this versus fight. Yeah. And then it goes on to say it it basically goes, Well, we want to be the original movie still. We wanna prove that. So it tries to have this heartfelt ending and it, it has this uh, very th- there's no action really it's it's just a, a stop godzilla but without the with, there's no fighting there's no fighting it doesn't have the emotion as the first one did because the that, characters yeah, aren't as good that's then the problem they're trying to do this moment but they haven't got any of the emotion to back it up so it kind of just feels hollow and cheap yeah because it, it kills the angles and there's like a good 35 to 45 minutes left of the movie after he does that I'd, I'd say about that, yeah. Yeah, so about half the movie's still left, and like I say, we have this like dinner party where, I guess this is the point where we're supposed to be getting to know the characters. And obviously, we start the movie being introduced to them before they first see Godzilla, and that's that's fine. But a lot of the movie takes place without them even really being there. Like once the fighting mm. gets going, there's a couple of reaction shots, but there's not much of them. It feels like that kind of should have been before the fighting. It does. It feels like the fight should have been moved further up the movie. You know, I hit further back into the movie and spend yeah. some time building your characters before then uh, and have them actually be devastated that their entire work place has been dis- decimated in the, the fight in Osaka. Yeah, that was the thing. They were like, oh, we, we lost our jobs. And it's like, nah, we'll just move it to, we'll just transfer you to a, to one yeah. of the other branches. Yeah, so it's cool. It, yeah, our dad's basically, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll rebuild just over in this new location and we'll transfer you all over. So it's, we're fine. Uh, yeah, don't, and don't want to worry about anything. It's all yeah. cool. So despite the, the fact that the entire city gets mana steeled, it, there's no consequences almost. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Uh, and they, they give you this moment where the, the goofy friend, uh, who's one of the, the main characters, uh, Kobayashi, He's because he's, the, the other pilot and the girl is engaged and he's got, he's in a scene with the girl and he's like, oh, what should I get you for a wedding present? And they have this little fun banter as, as they're trying to find Godzilla, by the way. They're, they're, the active on the planes are looking for Godzilla, but he's at the base talking to her. And she cracks some jokes about, oh, get me some stockings, get me get me a kettle, get me a this. Get, she, she lists off a bunch of things. And he leaves behind his diary and she opens his diary and he leaves for a sneaky little look. And there's a photo of him and I think his daughter or maybe his little sister, someone something like that. Yeah, but it's like, this like, oh, that's just sweet. I'm like, okay, he's dead. Yep, <laughs> he's so dead. And of course, he dies when they find Godzilla. Godzilla, I can't remember if he's one of the planes that he either uses atomic breath on or if he hits it with his hand. Uh, which, by the way, it was the only enjoyment I got out of that entire last ten minutes. Is when there's lots of planes because essentially when he dies, he, his plane flies into the mountain in this little island that Godzilla's on. Mm. And it causes a bit of an avalanche, and they realise, oh wait, we can bury them. If we just keep firing at the mountains, we can bury Godzilla yeah. with avalanches, and that'll deal with them. Okay, not a bad and plan. And this is where it kind of halts to boredom, though, because it is well, literally just shot after shot of them firing at a mountain. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong, I actually think this plan's fine, and I think that this could have been an entertaining ending. Yeah. It could have been, I don't think there's any reason why it shouldn't have been, it's just, it's just filmed in such a boring, dull way, where it's fire a shot. The, the only excitement I ever got out of any of it was with the couple of shots where Godzilla's like trying to swat the planes and... And there's they're few and far between. It is uh, literally mostly the same shot for, for all yeah. intents and purposes of plane left to right shoots a rocket bit of snow falls down. That's yeah. it. And when, uh, when it eventually... It takes like a good ten minutes and when it eventually finishes the pilot's like that's for you Kobayashi. We got Godzilla for you and he's like... Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, no mention of the entire city he just destroyed like three <laughs> days ago. Sh- but fine. Oh dear. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it's not perfect before then. Abs- don't get me wrong. Like the. So they come up with this plan. Uh, that okay. So they they kind of just gloss over the fact that Godzilla got killed in the first movie, uh, with the oxygen bomb. I mean, they mention it. They have the character who returns from the first film, who's only in the one scene. But like they obviously they, they wanted the face back from the first film, but he, he was like, "I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a scene." So they have him yeah. for a scene, and they, they they talk about the oxygen bomb, and they kind of just kind of just gloss over it, uh, and they're like, "Well, okay, right, we can't replicate the oxygen bomb, but it, he's in the first movie, and this is kind of a retcon to an extent, but it also kind of makes sense. It doesn't seem like a, a far fetched retcon mm. where." Okay, the lights of the explosions and the gunfire and everything else in the fire 
Uh, it made him angry, and he started acting out, and that uh, kind of happened. You can. Uh, it's it's hard to argue that it didn't. Yeah, it's just believable. So, like, well, maybe we can like lure him away with light. We can use light bombs and things to lure him away from populated areas. And I'm like, okay, fine. And when they finally does pop up, and he's going towards Osaka, they have the planes go out and they drop all these light sort of things, and it works. Godzilla's walk walking out into the ocean. He's walking away. It's working. And the pacing of this next bit's really weird. Because it feels like a lot happens that then sabotages this plan. Not intentionally, but it's it's very overcomplicated and shows a lot just for something to just for this to go wrong. Yeah. So we we, we get a, a convict bus. There's a police sort of uh you know, a, a, a convict a group of convicts in a in a van and the convicts escape. They they knock out one of the guards, take his gun, oh. and they, they go on the run. And three convicts in particular end up grabbing a car. Uh, the policemen or the prison guards who are chasing after them, actually, the two pilots that we know from the start of the movie and the end of the movie with, they actually get into their car and they're like, right, chase those convicts. And they're chasing the convicts. And we get a really boring car chase. And it's really boring just because of the way it's filmed. There's, there's no, it's like lots of just pans and... Very ca- car going from left to right in frame. Left it's very to right in frame. cheap, isn't it? Very cheap. Uh, but again, this is maybe part of like squeezing the movie out and such. A oh yeah, this is absolutely that is. Uh, it, it very much feels like. Well, let's just recycle as many shots as we can. Yeah. You know, keep it simple. Uh, that goes for the ending as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, so they eventually chase them into. I think it's the factory. Actually, they end up chasing them into. Uh, mm. And the convict's car crashes into one of the big reactor thingamajigs. The big sort of towers and that cuts in fire and it causes a big explosion and it's all fire and I actually kind of like that the whole plan to lure him away with light is actually messed up because someone accidentally causes a big explosion like this and it attracts Godzilla back to the city. I think that's actually a fine idea. I think what they should have done though is they should have intercut the events leading up to it in with like the army yeah, trying to get Godzilla like away. Yeah, it feels a weird chunk of it, doesn't it? Like yeah. the way it's split up. Because... Godzilla gets lured away, and then we spend a good like five to ten minutes like setting up all this convict stuff, and then the, the explosion happens, and Godzilla's still basically where he was when we last seen him, and he starts turning around, he's like, oh, fire, and he starts walking back. It just feels mm. like, had you intercut these up, maybe it would have yeah. had a bit more suspenseful, because you may be like, oh, how's this going to interconnect? How's, where's this convict thing going? Because I was thinking that. When we started off with the convicts, I'm like, why is there a convict escaping scene? Yeah, it felt like such a strange detour. Yeah, but fair enough. It did at the end of LinkedIn, and this this was relevant. Uh, I don't know if you needed it to bring in the main characters. Like, I don't know if we needed that. I'm not but... sure it needed to last quite as long as it did either. No, but again, I wouldn't have minded that if it was intercut with the other events. That, that would have felt a lot shorter, just yeah. because it, you weren't getting it all in one prolonged dose. Yeah, the problem was it was this. It was essentially a short film, a short five to ten minute movie. And it ended, and it's like, oh crap, okay, yeah, we're still in a Godzilla movie. That's right. Yeah. Right, you are. Uh, but that was that was a big thing early on. Uh, but uh, There was some weird pacing even before that, like uh, the bit where they just play the clips from the first movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's in the scene where they talk about the oxygen bomb and the, the oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's this dinosaur. That was that, that big, uh, that was basically the exposition scene where we got so yes. much information. Yeah. But they say, all right, we got some footage of uh, Godzilla's attack in Tokyo from the first movie, and they turn our projector and we see footage of Godzilla's attack, and it's just footage from the first movie. You could and you can be really snarky and say, uh, who was filming this? Actually, you know, in the movie, like for them yeah. to have the footage, who was filming it? But whatever. The bigger problem I had with that scene, though, apart from the fact that this goes on for like a good two minutes, and it's like two minutes of screen time of just footage from the first movie, and it's silent. It's silent. Yeah, that was the other thing. And that was something I noticed in the opening scene as well. There was a few other times. It was when Godzilla's first coming to Osaka and mm. he's coming out the water and the music's playing. There's no water sound effects. There's no yeah. first stops. And don't get me wrong, sometimes movies and TV shows will drown out all sound and just have music. So it's effective when they do it. But here it felt weird. It felt like they were it saving felt like time. Was missing, didn't it? Yeah, it felt, it felt like they were saving time and money. And because of that, there was weird times of this movie where it felt like a silent film. Yeah. Uh, right near the start, you know, he's in the plane, he's flying yeah. over, and then uh, when he's looking for the other one, the other pilot that's crashed, and he's looking down at the the island, trying to find him, see see if he can see the plane, and it's a good 
90 seconds, two minutes of just him looking out the window. And it all there is is just plain noise. And it go, it's it's like, this is a weird, weird amount of time to have no dialogue, no music. It, especially when you're not really showing us anything except random scenery. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, the watching the footage from the first movie scene it is legitimately silent for... There's yeah, not even a sound of the projector. The projector's on. It's one of these old, loud projectors. Like Even just yeah. that would have been fine. Yeah, and I could buy even, like, no music, but having some people react, maybe discuss what that, what, what's, because obviously the point of this is let's review the footage yeah. and, and even, see the ideas. Maybe have a little bit of discussion noise going on in the background. Even just some general mumblings mm. from a crowd, or even just room noise. I mean, ideally what you really should have is you should have the character from the first movie narrating the, the footage and yeah, talking yeah, about what's it. what's going on right. and why is yeah. this... Here's Godzilla attacking this part of Tokyo. Here's him reacting to this. Yeah, like, yeah. Have him L- look things. how when this when this building's on fire, he he gets angrier. Yeah, I think I think this is a weird movie where it was trying to be a sequel to the first one, but what we weren't at the point yet where okay, we know what Godzilla the series is. Where it's it feels like you know you know those sequels where they just kind of remake the first movie but with a different mm. cast. It kind of feels like one of those but without the actual weight of the first movie. Yeah. It feels really hollow in comparison. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 Angulus is not a monster that... I mean, I think he might have a cameo in like one or two movies later, because there's, there's some movies where they throw in a lot of monsters and you see like a couple yeah. of really obscure ones for a second, but he never has a starring role again. He, he never... Whereas like, as soon as we get to the big boys, like Mothra appears multiple times, Rodan appears multiple times, Ghidorah appears multiple times. I'll tell you what I do really like, though. Hmm. His 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 roar. The sa- his sound. Oh, Angulus? Yeah. Oh. I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, I thought I complimented Godzilla's sound quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, the name's very similar to Angerus, uh, which I'm sure is one of the monsters, and even he's got a similar sort of all, in, all fours, spiky back kind of thing. I think it's almost like this was the prototype right. for him. I'm going yeah, to check, actually. I just want to be sure I'm not talking complete nonsense. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time you've talked nonsense, would it? It, it would not. It would not. <laughs> Uh, more thoughts, Connor. Continue. More Align. thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah. The whole opening was a bit weird for me. I didn't really get why it was telling us so much about the previous movie. I get that they wanted to make sure that uh, if you didn't see the first one, here, here you're up to date. But it went on so long that it felt very unnecessary. All right. Okay. Right. So I'm not being completely crazy. Turns out this is Angerus, but this movie originally called them Angulus. With, the, with yes, an L. As, as we've just seen. As we, as yeah, as we've just been talking about. Uh, some versions do have the name changed in this one to Angerus, but no wonder I was confused about <laughs> about the, the name being similar. They just they just changed the changed the name later on. To be fair, Angerus I think actually is easier to say. Angulus, getting that L in there is. Angulus, I think that's kind of just your accent. Maybe it is, but I, I I'm finding Angerus easier to say, so <laughs> I'm okay fair with enough. that. That's cool. Well, well, you know that later on, when that comes back up, you'll have a much easier job. Oh, mate, he's got like six nicknames as well. <laughs> six? Angulus, Ang- Angorus, Boriangarius, Angulosaurus. Oh, Angulosaurus did pop up in this. He said oh, that I out did. the book. Yeah, that, yeah. That, was, that was the first one. That was the full title, yeah. Uh, Angulus, it's just some minor different spell. And then my favourite one here is at the end. Angie. I thought you were just going to go with, like, Bob or something like that. <laughs> no, no. Angie. <laughs> Angie. Who, I like who, that one. Who, who's on, uh, like, friendly terms with him? He's like, hey, Angie. <laughs> Come out and party, man. Look, clearly at some point, him and Godzilla settle their differences. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, he, he does pop up a few times, actually. Yeah, he pops okay. up a few times. Okay. So, All, right. All right, okay. I, I got I sidetracked with my... My, my, my slitting mm. there. Um, so yeah, it's sum up. Uh, fairly weak, fairly weak movie. Uh, the, also, one of the miniatures that really stuck out to me is being bad. At one point, Godzilla's tail. It's when he turns around to follow the light. Uh, sort of mm. decoys. His, his tail turns and it hits a lighthouse, and the lighthouse looks particularly bad. 
which is it, it, it sticks out more given how good some of the buildings are yeah a lot of the other buildings looked really good and crumbled really well which i thought looked great but the only other one that bothered me was there's a moment where it's clearly gonna they're clearly gonna go through this built building mm. but it didn't look like a building it kind of just looked like a wall like they'd only built the front facing mm-hmm. that, that was the only one that, other one that really bothered me yeah, I'd have to go back and check, but I'm going to speculate that maybe the idea was that they'd already like hit the other side of it. It might have been. Well, that would be fair. It, it was just it, it didn't look that destroyed from the angle they were portraying. Yeah, at least. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that one stuck out to me. Uh, the characters are kind of like they're, they're there. I, I think the big problem is we've kind of alluded to it as we've been talking about it is they don't seem very concerned about the actual going on. They don't care about the gazelle. They don't care about Angus. They they're just talking about oh we've got a wedding coming up and yeah jobs. it's it's, it's hard to care about them when when they don't care about anything because in the first movie now don't get me wrong i'm pretty sure going forward the, the human characters aren't going to be as compelling as the first yeah that that amazing but here it feels like they want them to be and i think the problem is, is and even though in the first movie we have like a couple we even kind of have a love triangle because the, the scientist dude was into the girl i i think as much as those feelings are all there, and they clearly establish that they're all there, as soon as stuff starts going down, they're not like, oh, we should talk about our feelings, talk about our relationships. Oh, oh this is far more important. Let's deal no. with this. The, there's a giant goddamn lizard destroying the city. We need it, these guys us. go off and have a party. Go, uh, let's get let's go your, go your frat brothers around and, and have some drinks and, and have a bit of a sing. Even the extras, actually, because I commented that because they've seen Godzilla, they've spotted Godzilla in the in the water, and they know that he might be coming to one of the cities, and they know they know he's near Osaka. And we we start this scene just before Godzilla shows up to Osaka, uh, in the sort of the main part of town, all the, the, the lights. And yeah, all that. we're in like this this nightclub. Then yeah, we go to a nightclub, and they're all there. They're dancing. There's like some music playing, live band. They're all having a good night. The place is packed. They're sold out. And then the warning, the warning comes over the radio. They're like, "Oh, uh, you know, emergency alert! Godzilla is approaching the city. Uh, everyone, take cover, evacuate!" Blah 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 blah. And like, they all panic and rush for the exits. And all I could think was, "You knew there was a chance that this could happen." I mean, last night on Earth, let's let's celebrate. <laughs> let's have some fun. You knew this could happen, and you thought, "No, we'll go out to a nightclub and we'll." I, I wonder if this is supposed to be an allegory for like earthquakes in japan obviously earthquakes are a big problem over there it's very common okay and they, 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 it's something they all like have to deal with they go okay we, we might be due an earthquake right but they don't all stop and halt everything they kind of get they've got to get on with their lives and then and then the emergency sirens sound and that's when the panic sets in i assume i guess i, I, I don't know i think it's just, a bit of a stretch because godzilla is very different because it is i'm just trying to find because earthquakes to... could happen at any time and they're always a thing they're always a, yeah. something that could potentially be happening so if you decide not to leave your house because of an earthquake you'd be never leaving the house whereas godzilla it's like no no you well yeah but you you can know oh we're due an earthquake like things like because of the movements there's, there could be there's probably going to be an earthquake in the next like you know few days sure it still seems a stretch to me i mean uh, it does to me as well i'm just trying to think of some way to rationalize it give them the benefit of the doubt somewhere Given the fact that the main characters are all joking about things like yeah, that, that, a night that, after the entire city's one. been decimated, I don't think they put that much thought into this other scene with the extras. Probably not. That would Probably be my not. guess. Yeah. I, I, if someone proves me wrong, I'll eat my words. But it, yeah, you're more than likely right. I, I'm just, I'm just trying to help them out. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. So like we say, the last like half an hour is really boring. <laughs> unfortunately. It is because it's like that, that, that you get that fight. It peaks clearly there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, between the two of them, you're like, oh, that's over. They were, like, he won. That's it. There's no round two. It's just okay. Now we just have to wrap up and play the same beats as the first movie, but not as good. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. And we get you know ten, fifteen minutes of dinner and drinks and then being happy then we get we're looking and this is the thing that got me as well after the uh after the friend dies and like they, they get the idea because it causes a little avalanche and it covers Godzilla a little bit they actually all go back to base and we cut to a scene of him with a map explaining the idea and i'm like 
you're you're cutting out of the middle of your final action scene <laughs> to yeah. to do a plan scene, and I'm like, no, no just stay out there. Like, just, just tell them over the radio, hey guys, yeah, call more shoot, in. The, shoot the shoot the mountains, and then and then it could actually be exciting that he has to somehow hold Godzilla off himself, or the two or three of them that are out there. Will the mm. reinforcements come with all the bombs to do the plan? Yeah. That could have been exciting. That could have been like, oh, I need to try and stop Godzilla from leaving this area so that it'll work when they get here. That could have been the, 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 the danger, the, the threat. The, 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 yeah, it was real convenient the that, that Godzilla just sat there for him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, there you go. That's that's Godzilla Raids again. Obviously not as good as the first film. Uh, but we'll get to ratings. Mm. And do you know what we'll do? We'll also rate the first film because we hadn't started doing ratings when we did the first one. There's a couple of episodes in when we decided to start doing that. So mm. we'll be rating it out of 10. So Godzilla first. 9.5 for Godzilla. I also give it a 9.5. Isn't that convenient? Oh, very good. Right, so classic, excellent, uh, damn near perfect. Aye, all, all the usual stuff that goes along with a 9.5. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> just so you know where we're coming from when we rate Godzilla Raids again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the context is context. important. Uh, which admittedly is going to get kind of muddy when we get to the, the later ones that are really goofy goofy but enjoyable. Because it's like, I mean, what sort of scale are we rating them on compared to the first one? When... See, I, everyone does this differently. What I tend to do there is I, I rate it on what they're trying to do. Like, if they're clearly being a B-movie and they're just being fun mm, okay. and they succeed in that... Then I give them, you know, like, whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's clearly not the a seven in that. Say does not mean the same as if I'd given Godzilla a seven. It, it's mm. it's very different. So with that said, Godzilla reads again, Connor. I'm thinking maybe a four. Hmm. That feels. Feels a little harsh, maybe. Does feel because, a little bit harsh to me. It like it's not technically that bad. It's just boring. It's below average. I think I, I'm going to go slightly higher. I think that's just a, a touch harsh because as much as we have spent a lot of time saying what's what doesn't work and the mistakes they've made and what they mm. could have done to improve it and so on. I I also I also I think that there's also a, at least a, a touch of. Uh, genuine intent behind it is as strange as that might sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel overly malicious or uh, completely I agree. And I, I had fun with the with the fight. Yeah. There's a couple, some redeeming qualities in there, so I'm going to go a point higher. I'm going to say 5 out of 10. Alright. That's fair. And, and uh, yeah. But hopefully, hopefully King Kong vs. Godzilla, which is the third movie, which will mm. be next month, hopefully that will be a uh, so we should probably take the time to mention that uh, next week Kong Skull Island's out and we'll be doing that on the regular new movie show 1.21 gigawatts uh, that'll be up next weekend so uh, look look forward to that uh, but that is Godzilla Raids again that is the second of at current count 29 Japanese Godzilla movies oh that's alright we made a solid dent uh, we're, also, we're getting through these it just so happens that a couple of hours ago we found out that uh, the newest Godzilla, uh, Shin Godzilla, aka Godzilla. Oh, what was the American title for? Couldn't tell you. The new one, Resurgence, Godzilla Resurgence. Uh, but Shin Godzilla is the Japanese title. Uh, that actually just won Best Picture at the Japanese Academy Awards earlier today. And a bunch of other stuff too. Yeah, it got edited. It, it, it swept. Directing, it got. I'm assuming. Well, they've got a lighting award. I'm assuming that might be cinematography, or maybe cinematography split up into things. Like mm, you get a lighting award. I'd, I'd have to look at what all their awards are to really say yeah, which yeah. what what correlates to what. But uh, it got a bunch of stuff. Uh, and sometimes Japan <laughs> knows how to <laughs> knows how to give awards out. Uh, they they do, and of course I can't say that they're, 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 ne- they're necessarily wrong. Of course, that's assuming they read out the right thing. Maybe Moonlight actually won Best Picture. I don't know. Uh, but, but that's Godzilla Raids again. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you think of this one if you've seen it in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mild underscore fuzz for channel updates. Get our individual Twitters. I'm at Wibble89. Connor's at ConnorRyan94 for everyday ramblings. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.